now today we are going to discuss about the now this is the what deployment deployment object we are going to discuss now now what are the things will happen if i do the deployment okay now let's uh, draw the diagram for this now basically if i do the deployment what will happen now this is for example take a this is the deployment okay think this is the diagram will give the entire your kubernetes how the it will goes okay this is the deployment object inside that if you create the deployment object it will create the replica set also okay no need to create the replica set for separately for this now this is a replica set now the replica set will be create what does what does mean here in inside the pods also will be creates right this pod okay inside pod what it contains inside our applications are there our containers are running inside this maybe one container maybe single single containers in the pod maybe if you have the requirement based on the requirement it may contain the two two containers also okay that would be based on the requirement the dependency containers you can say okay now it's running on this if you deploy the deployment object no need to deploy the replica sets no need to deploy the pods it's in the single object itself three things will be deployed at a time remember this is very very important and what about the service object what we do we are going to create the service object separately then we are going to be add our labels of deployment that will be same label of service object then both will match this all replicas all pods will be added to the service object now from the service object we are accessing the outside of the world got it right now first we done the pods then we can't access replica set we done with service object now then after that this is a service object okay for accessing outside of because of what happens sir like pods they don't have a ip is not constant right because of what the pods may be come and going like as if it is new new thing will come or as new it will be go for die also right now the pods is not reliable ips that's why we are going to create the one service that's fixed for dns and public ip that and the, they said we should give the one, one ip for static ip that will can access for the outside of the world from the through service object okay that's we are providing the node port for this ip and then we can access that i with port we are accessing our outside of the our applications right this is the things will happen now what we are going to do we are going to create the deployment object and then replica set it will get out of inside this deployment object even though we create the replica set and pods then what is the use of deployment okay we replica set also will do the same thing right now this deployment object having the some strategies what are the strategies are there means we'll discuss that scrolling update okay and uh, there is some strategies we have okay we'll discuss that is also okay like as uh, what happening if you the new version is not working the old version will be Adding this, okay. That's kind of things will be take care of this, okay. Now what happening? The two versions they are going to be deployed at a time, like as new version and the old version. The new new version up to up and running, the old version won't be done, won't be delayed. That kind of scenarios will be used for the deployment object. Okay, we'll see that. What are the strategies we can follow this? Now before going to this, this service object, right? This service object we can run into the two times, two types. One is the imperative way. imperative way and another one is the declarative way very very important declarative way and which is the way we follow means in real time we use the any time the declarative way only what is the imperative way just write the one service command line object just we write in the only command line this only from command line just i run the one command and we will create the service object through command line right and this is declarative way what we do we return the object like as yml or json file we are going to create and we are going to deploy this this is a declarative way this is a imperative way because of if like as you run today and you go we will left from office then what is the values you passed okay or what is the labels you selected you run and what happen if someone more you want to check and all how they can't be checked right like right because of it is not Uh, storing for the future purpose no there is no reference if you run the uh, like as the imperative way okay that's why we never go for the 
imperative way. Even if you want to like testing purpose, we can use for imperative way. This simple one command instead of writing the YAML file, instead of writing the JSON file RS, we can directly use it the imperative way and we can test that service if it works or not. Or else we must most of the time we are going for the declarative way. We write the service object through YAML file. That YAML file we are going to deploy that. Okay. Now see that how the look like of imperative way and uh, declarative way. Uh, I'll show the syntax of this. <coughs> Okay, let's uh, go a little bit up. This is we'll discuss even on real time uh, scenario also complication in that how it works exactly in the real time. Okay, okay then somewhere I've written one second. This is imperative way. Okay, what is the imperative way? Warning: the imperative way is not Kubernetes way. Okay, it is in terms of risk of changes to made imperatively never make it into a declarative manifest, rendering the manifest stale. Okay, this what is the risk of here? What does it mean here? The stale manifest used to the update the cluster on the later day. For example, you want to update something. Okay, unintentionally overwriting the changes that were made imperatively, like because of you can't be changing that right. Because if you want to change any risk kernel, you can't be modify that for command. Now you want to the that backup of the what you run. That's why what we do, we must be follow. This is for example, this replica set, whatever we run yesterday, the same thing, replica set this is. Then if it imperative means just we run the kubectl create and then this is the like as like as this is a YAML file. That's for this is service object deployment and this is C. And you, how we can access this? Like as kubectl expose, this is a replica set, and hello, and the target way, and node port. We mentioned like this, and service object, and we are going to be get it done. Okay, like this, we are going to be through command, through command uh, imperative way, we are going to use this. Okay, no, you want updating something, you want to modify something, you can't be modified after this, right? No, that's why we need to be right into the declarative way. Declarative means this service object we are mentioning into the one place that is the one uh, YAML file we are going to write in and that we are going to be deploy that. Okay, this is the it's simple writing the command that is we are calling as a imperative way. In the declarative way is what does mean whatever we done yesterday, right? That is the declarative way. Let me show you. This is what we do. We written the service manifest. Okay, we done yesterday and replica set we are going to write the service object. Then that is the previous one is a replica set. Then we are going to deploy and we can access this. Clear. <coughs> so now that is what we are going to be do the declarative way and imperative way difference. Okay, simple. Like as in imperative way is just the service object we are going to create through the command line. Okay, that because of we don't have the any backup of that what we are done the earlier, right? If you want to modify and we are going to run that, you don't know like as what exactly you run the earlier. If you do the okay fine. If someone we want to do they can't be right that's the issue on that clear and most of the time we go for the declarative way only okay that is for imperative way, declarative way difference okay and this is the what how to get is that <coughs> if you want to get the endpoints of that what is the exactly ports are uh, binding and all we are going to use the ep okay like as particular service endpoints you want to get it you get the ep of that like as um, what is the services we have? Like for example, let's do that. QBCTL get services. Now this one, right? Hello SVC means now if you want to like QBCTL get endpoint of this service name. Hello F1 SVC. If you're done, one second. Broadcasting key from okay, right? This is how all what is the ports are there, how many it was running from when one of when you are created, what is the IP of that, what is the port is running application. These are the these are the pod IPs, okay? These are the all the pod IPs. This endpoints is showing that how many endpoints means how many parts we are indicated. This okay, clear totally five, this three plus two more, clear. That is why uh, to get the endpoints also. 
Endpoint means what are the things are connected to the service that that, that has been okay. Endpoint means nothing. How many parts are connected for this service? That is what we are calling as endpoint. Okay. Now uh, let's. So, This is what we done. Okay. If you want to describe, you can get the describe also. Okay. This is what same what the IP is yesterday. We already done this. Okay. We'll discuss the real world example once our class is done. Okay. Then we'll go for de deployment model. Okay. This deployment model is the most of the time we are going to use for the rolling updates purpose. The main purpose is the rolling updates. Okay rolling updates rollbacks okay because of the new old version is not working new version will go be deployed okay that this is a like as for this scenario these strategies we are going to for deployment strategy is very very important even we are going to do the real time the same deployment and then one more is the service object these two is the main thing we are going to use okay now and rollbacks and all these other purpose are we are going to use that okay and we'll see that how we are going to do that See, this is the main for deployment manage the replica sets and then replica set manage the pods throw them into the uh, pod And we got a, a pretty awesome way to the deploy the manage Kubernetes application okay. Rolling updates the old way. Okay. Now what happening before we had deployment like as how we do Replication controller we do and the re means re replica set. Okay, if you want to update the app we need to create the new replica controller then a difference between those two and virtual label we need to modify these are the lot of things we should be take care of the if you do the updates if you new updates will do okay if you if you do the deployments what to do just we change into the deploy object it will be automatically effect to the all the our replica set also no need to the multiple times rolling updates for uh, doing this that is a see the simple the deployment object for the update purpose if a new version will come if you don't want to like as remove old one and deploy that here automatically what happening if a new version will come the new version will go for deployment that's it that's what I'm trying to say this here okay just go through the theoretically you will get more understandable okay and uh, if you have read it will get a boring okay that's same that's that's what I, I'm trying to say this okay says so for example this one version is deployed okay in the cluster something is working in this here there is no empty replica set here it will it will assign to the all these parts and if you want to roll back here what happening it won't work it will come to this this is an example of what trying to say got it right if you want to it won't take much time to roll back your application if non works got it that's what the rollbacks will be do for inside the deployment object clear guys that is the main reason for the deployment object we are going to use then how to create deployment object let's see now okay now just what i do uh, whatever we done the replica sets yesterday okay we are going to delete that let's see why i am going to delete that means i'm going to run the same port and same application again and again okay the same name if you want you can create the new one also but for one one example purpose i'm going to take the same example and how you get the replica set qbctl get rs means that is a replica set okay this is a replica set is running this is a five current state desert set is contains are running okay let it be then how we are going to delete this replica set just delete the rs okay delete rs and then rs name web rs okay web rs replica set is deleted now our parts will be running or not now our parts are running okay this see this replica set will be deleted now let's see what happened. See, if you delete the replica set directly, it will be deleted. If you do the cascade, that cascade equal false means the part won't be deleted. That is a what we done yesterday, right? Cascade equal false. That is the meaning of that is a like as a replica set parts will be the removing like a without parts it will be removing that's the that is the meaning of cascade yesterday we done okay that's the reason clear now okay now let's uh, do it today again instead of pod instead of a replica set we are going to write the deployment object okay just i'm going to give the name called as deploy.yml
here same syntax but here it will come the little bit extra things i'll show that here what are the things will extra this is the statuses will come extra rolling updates okay rolling update how many times it will be rolling will be there how many uh, unavailable it will want to do how many search time maximum uh, like as uh, checking for personal this is for rolling updates uh, strategies and then and then how many like what is the replica cell it will be create three replicas will create and then what is that uh, this is a deployment name hello deploy and then this is my like as our label name and this template name should be same and then this is our pod name okay and see this is the image we are going to be deploy and this is a what is the port is running 8080 only okay application is running on the 8080 okay this is our deployment object let's save this same nothing it will come the one strategy for rolling updates purpose that's it okay see this is the I, I explained everything in the documentation just to go through this okay now we have this see why we are good rolling updates means if a new version will come what you do it will be won't let like, checking for the one time and it will be deployed for the new version okay it, until unless if it's not going to work if it automatically rolling updates for the application okay that is the meaning of that okay then next this is a theoretically just go through that and how to deploy just create or apply hyphen f okay you can use for qbctm apply hyphen f of oh. <coughs> this deployment object is created okay now <coughs> now what we need to do we need to be check that deployment object how to get uh, this is deploy and deploy name Now, how many containers are? That is three by three. Now, once again. describe. Let's describe it. It's because of this, this there is no application is running now because of it should be come to the R. <coughs> <coughs> now it's coming okay it's take time to double <coughs> so yes okay this take for the time for the, the de deployment one second guys This conference will now be recorded. Okay, now what we do, we de we deploy the our parts and all running, right? Now if check that how many parts are running now. QBCTL get parts. Okay. Now these are the extra deploy parts will be running now. Now what we need to do, if you want to check the la labels also, how we are going to check with the labels iPhone iPhone show labels. Okay, this is very very important when you do uh, what is the labels for show iPhone labels. Okay, now this is the link. Okay, now this is a, a deployed application for recently. Now let's uh, what we do. Let's write write a service object to deploy this. If you want to describe describe same QBCTL describe and hello deploy. If you want, you can get it this. Now this is a uh, which port is running, what is the environment, what is that uh, conditions, all these things. Okay, scaling cryptic assets when it was done. Okay, it's created or not. If something goes wrong, what happening? It will be showing the down. Okay, if an error will come under, we can see here. You can see here error here. Okay. Okay, 
this crime you can see here okay now this is what i'm trying to say then now let's what we do to access this application what what we must do see that replica even if you deploy this space pod replica set everything in deploy right now if you want you can check the replica set also what are the replica sets you're getting right now this is a hollow deploy replica set also will be created for us right now the next how to access the application we need a service object right now let's create the service object this now i'm going to create the svc.ml oh, va is already there now even the same application now we can uh, edit this here i used for the hello world only okay <coughs> I'll show that what it does mean here. Earlier we are that labels, right? That labels, this label should be matched. This hello world application, the selector I'm giving, right? This name and then and then go to VI of deploy.ml file and this name should be the same. Okay. That name and this name should be the same, not this. Okay, this is for only for object service, like a deployment object name. And this is our container name. This is a label should be the match. Then only that object will be re-add into the our service object. Okay, that service object will be added to that. Now let's um, deploy this now. How to deploy kubectl apply f of svc dot yml. This was configured. Now let's get service object now this node port is running on which port number 3001 right now let's we need to be access we can able to access that application now let's go and access that application now now go to here go to here let's go to the master This is a way we can deploy that. That yesterday image is different. This image is different. Okay, it's not the same image. Okay, but we deployed. Okay, clear. Now, even if you refresh here, let's see that deployment object will come to in the our Kubernetes dashboard also. It got expired. Sign. Okay, now see the deployment object will come to here. What is the deployment object? That name. How many container pods are running here? This is from when onwards. What is the age of this? Okay, this is the pods are running here. The replica sets will be down. Service object are these two. Okay, and this is the replica sets just now we create. That old replica set we deleted. And this is the namespaces. What is the namespaces based on the requirement like as a QVAT, deployment, production, pre-production. Based on that, we are going to create the name, uh, namespaces. And particular namespaces, we are going to use them. All softwares we deploy into like as a dashboard and all into the QV system namespace. Okay, because we used for the default namespace to deploy the, our applications. Okay, and then uh, there is a some more concept called as ingress is the load balancing. Okay, and you can schedule also but for a job you want to run deploy particular time means we can schedule the cron jobs demon sets okay this also for scheduling job purpose <coughs> you will get it that uh, feature also this within a month you will get it okay currently i'm working on that i'll give that one side then clear guys this is the way we are going to deploy and now uh, i'm going to show you that one real example of the how kubernetes works what is a roll rolling up like as i told right a rolling updates and all how it works okay now i'm going to show the one diagram just uh, keep in mind okay, this is a very very uh, important when you go for an interview on how it works okay how that uh, going to be deployed if a new version will come okay what will happen that we, we are seeing that someone word with the real time like as what is a blue green deployment what does mean blue green deployment that means the old version is come should be running here a new version will come until unless the new version will be working on the old version won't be 
won't, the won't be delayed. And even though if you want to switch any time, any time, what do we do? The, if you know new version won't be won't up, it's not working fine. The old version containers are running. That we are going to be it take the we are going to changing that immediately to the deployment. Okay, to the rolling updates will be going to be take care of that. How and all? Let me show you that. Okay, let's uh, where is that? Let's refine it. This is what I said, right? In the deployment object means updates and rollbacks and self-healing scalability. Pods are running the applications. In the it has a number of pods. In the each pod has a number of applications, number of containers. Yes, simply. Okay. Now this is exactly real world example. Okay. Now let's see. Uh, how does it uh, bring you and how it keep the business running? How does keep business running and make them more agile and res resilient? Resilient means without any downtime. Means we all know the update of business application fact of uh, life bug fixes, new feature, etc. etc. will come into that. Now what happening here? One service object I deployed with the uh, app application bridge one and zone is a production. Now bridge one product production the service object labels are there. The replica set it will be created and we can access that service object. Okay. This is we are going to back it now next what happening now. This is running <coughs> Now see here now what happening here it is running on the one version 7.17.06.02 and the new version will come that's 17.6 this also will deploy it and both will be connected in the service object Okay, because of the same label name right same labels. We are not labeled with the version here. We are labeled with the like as app and the zone we where we are going to deploy this application Okay, that new both will be because of version. They are not taking as a label selector We are taking this label selector what app and the zone here. Okay, the both all both will be matched into the service object For example, let's go to the next diagram Now If something now what happening the new version will be oh it will be pointed out to the service object It will give the response for them this if there is no connection for this now because it's a old version now if something goes wrong here What they'll do they, in the directly will be connected here. It will get the response from them That is a meaning of role like as blue green deployment kind of things and Okay, now we had that word blue green deployment means the both version should be up and running Okay, if it's old version the new version now if something goes wrong in the particular version It will be immediately switched to the old version like that. Okay that is the meaning of uh, blue green deployment. You guys are hearing us sometime. Yeah, that's what. As for my understanding, there is a lot of uh, articles are there for blue green deployment. Okay, there are number of tools to use for to deploy like as Mesos Marathon Rancher and uh, this is Kubernetes. Okay, to deploy the blue green deployments. That's based on that. <coughs> That's all this. Okay.